Let's bring in our panel of experts. Mort Klein, the national president of the Zionist Organization of America. Also with us, Alex Trayman, CEO and bureau chief of the Jewish News Syndicate. Also with us, Benjamin Weingarten, senior contributor of The Federalist and author of the book, American Ingrate. Alex, I'll start with you first. We've seen so many of those vile videos coming out of Israel, Hamas terrorists parading hostages throughout the streets, desecrating the bodies, women, unimaginable actions, elderly people. It's, it's a really stark reminder that if Hamas laid down their weapons, that, you know, it's just unbelievable to me that if, if Israel laid down their weapons, if Israel wasn't peaceful, Hamas would literally slaughter everyone. That's what people need to understand here, that there can be no peace if there is a Hamas. Am I wrong? Well, now we're going to see, in fact, the exact opposite of peace because Israel is going to have no choice but to launch a massive counteroffensive inside the Gaza Strip to restore order and, as uh, Defense Minister Yoav Gallant said, to, to change the, the status on the ground for the next 50 years. Because, as you said, if Israel will lay down its weapons, uh, Israel will be destroyed. And the only way that Israel can have peace is to enforce peace and to restore deterrence that's been lost over the course of many years uh, because of a lack of a strong enough response. Now, more just three days ago, you penned this op-ed. Three days ago, President Biden's extraordinary hostility to Israel. You, you, you beautifully outlined a series of actions by the Biden administration that watered down our alliance with Israel and emboldened the world's worst actors. Tell me about it. You said it exactly right, uh, President Biden. <laughs> Uh, provided $6 billion in funds to uh, Iran, who calls for the destruction of Israel as well as America. And he provided $3 billion more uh, from Iraqi banks for Iran. And worse than that, he's ignored all sanctions. Donald Trump put in extensive sanctions where, uh, where Iran was on its, uh, on its knees, and now they've ignored him, Biden has, and they're making more money from oil than ever before. This has provided the funding for these types of operations that, uh, that uh, the Biden funds have, have provided. In addition, Biden has funded the anti-government protests in Israel, really helping to make uh, an enormous problems for the government in Israel and sending a message to the Arabs that Israel now has internal troubles and this may be a good time to attack. So I blame Biden's actions in significant part for what has just transpired. And his words yesterday of uh, support, thank you very much, but the actions are more important. By the way, he's also praised the most vicious anti-Semites in Congress, Rashida Tlaib, Omar, praised them, giving strength to anti-Semites and Arab Jew haters uh, to fight against Israel, thinking they have America on their side. What do you think about the fact, Mort, that their type of rhetoric is, is not only tolerated, it's encouraged by the Biden administration. <laughs> the Biden administration just put out an anti-Semitism project where they accepted as very important the nexus definition, that if you say Israel should not exist, uh, that that's not anti-Semitism. And, and he's also hired people in top posts like Hadi Amar, the liaison to Israel. I think we lost Mort right there. Benjamin, I wanted to ask you this question. Mort brought up an excellent point about the funding. We get a lot of oil from Saudi Arabia thanks to Biden's war on the fossil fuel industry. Are we indirectly funding this, this type of terrorism? Because Saudi Arabia is clearly aligned with Hamas. I think that we are providing, we are the premier aider, abetter, and enabler of the world's leading state sponsor of jihad, Iran. As a direct consequence, as has been noted, of not enforcing sanctions, if we go back to the Obama-Biden administration, the tens of billions of dollars that flowed into the malocracy's coffers, the weapons in Afghanistan that we left behind that flowed into Gaza, millions to Gaza and to the Palestinian Authority, which flows in, in every single respect, this administration has sought to aid, abet, and enable jihadists, Sunni and Shia, who are now marauding and acting in the barbaric fashion that they are, in Israel, and at, by, to, by the same token, de, to try to destabilize and delegitimize Israel, the democracy in the Middle East, as you know it, and the first pillar, the first line of defense for Western civilization against this barbarism 
thereby undermining our national interest. It is really incredible. More, I know we, I think we got you back, Mort. Yes. Okay. We're, we're, they're, I think they're telling me we're, we're running out of time. Do you think this would have happened under President Trump? It never would have happened. Trump had Iran on the sneeze. Uh, Iran knew that Trump would help Israel in every way to make sure nothing like this could happen. <laughs> and, and Trump would never have hired anti-Israel, anti-Semites to important posts like Hadi Amar, who said he's inspired by the terror war against Jews, Mahir Bittar, who says uh, that we should demonize Israel in every way we can, Avril Haines, a head of the National Security Council, who accused Israel of terrorism and incitement. But, uh, uh, Trump had people who are supportive of America, supportive of Israel. Biden has people who are hostile to America and extremely hostile to Israel. This never would have happened under Donald Trump. Alex Treeman, what do you think? I mean, sh should there be any doubt in anyone's mind at this point that Biden does not put America first? He does not put his allies first. We saw what happened in Afghanistan. Now we're seeing what's happened in Israel. We're seeing what's happening here in the United States. He has a wide open border. There's even unconfirmed reports that some of the weapons that were left in Afghanistan have made their way uh, to Palestinian militants. Uh, and the Trump years were some of the most quiet in Israel because the entire world understood that the United States had Israel's back. And clearly, uh, the United States has been acting against Israel's interests. They've been slowing the momentum of the Abraham Accords. Uh, they've been providing funding to Iran, and they've been providing funding to the Palestinian Authority. Uh, so the, as the old statement goes, with friends like these, you, know, you, you finish a sentence. Right. I mean, who needs enemies? Exactly. Uh, Mort, is, could that be true, that the weapons we left behind are, are being used? Yes, I've heard the same reports. <laughs> Where else would they be going? They're not sitting there in people's homes. Uh, they're being sold throughout the world, including to Hamas and other Palestinian terrorists. <laughs> and uh, by the way, another big factor that's a major problem, when Biden refused to invite the prime minister of Israel to the White House, while having smiling meetings with Abbas, while calling Israel an extremist government, but praising Abbas, this sends a message to the Arab terrorist world that America is hostile to Israel. They will be supporting us. It inspired them. Biden has been a disaster for the Jewish state of Israel and, frankly, for America as well. That's another story. And, and for the world, absolutely. Mort Klein, Alex Treyman, Benjamin Weingarten, we'll be talking to you again real soon. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us this afternoon. Thank you.